All right, you knew it was coming. After last week's video, the world's top 10 newest baseball stadiums, only natural the follow-up would be the world's oldest baseball stadiums. But you notice in the title that it's top 25 rather than just top 10. If we made it a top 10, there would be some really good ballparks missing. And I run through this list a little more quickly. All of the stadiums are over 90 years old. Some of them are really small. No retractable roofs, VIP suites, or other special features like that. Mostly just history to talk about here. When doing the top 10 newest stadiums, we required that the stadiums seat over 10,000 and be used by the country's top professional league. For this one, of course, we removed that requirement. There are college, minor league, amateur league, as well as large professional league stadiums included here. There was a comment on last week's video from a user named Flaming Francis mentioning the Sydney Cricket Ground, which opened in the 1850s. Ten years ago, that was used for the MLB opening series, so it is the oldest stadium to host a major league game and would be number one on this list. But I won't include it here. It wasn't used for baseball till a major league exhibition in 1914, so that would be the first year it could be considered a baseball stadium. Even then though, it wasn't used again for baseball till a century later. It's a cricket ground, and in this video I'll only be including stadiums that were built for baseball, and have been used primarily for baseball throughout their history. And I've got to give credit to Jake Kane at BallparkSavvy.com. He wrote an article I'll link in the description where he listed about 40 of the oldest stadiums in the world. All I had to do was reduce the number to 25, find my own pictures, and verify that all the information was correct. And turns out it was all accurate. And then of course I found some more information to add. Before starting the top 25, out of the ones that were almost old enough to make this list, there are two that I want to mention. One is Rizal Memorial Baseball Stadium in Manila, Philippines. It was built in 1934 for the Far East Championship Games. In December of that year, a Major League All-Star team played there. Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth hit the first and second home runs respectively at Rizal. Jimmy Fox was also there. Capacity of Rizal is 10,000 and serves as a reminder that baseball used to be a big sport in the Philippines. Also want to mention Tainan Municipal Baseball Stadium. Built in 1931 while the island was under Japanese control. Seats 12,000. The feature that really sticks out is height and position of the stadium lights. The stadium is in the path of commercial planes, so the lights were lowered and moved inside the ballpark. Still used by the Uni Lions, it's the oldest ballpark still being used in the CPBL. Okay, those two parks are old, but not quite old enough. Number 25 takes us back to 1926, Meiji Jingu Stadium in Tokyo, Japan. The stadium opened after just 10 months of construction, at a cost of about $4,000. Capacity just over 30,000. On the same tour where Ruth, Gehrig, and Fox played in the Philippines, they also played in Japan at two different venues, one of them being Jingu. The Tokyo Yakult Swallows have called it home since 1964. It's 394 feet to center, 320 to left and right. Unfortunately, it won't be around too much longer. No time frame yet for its demolition, but they hope to have a new stadium ready to go by 2036. Number 24 is McCormick Field in Asheville, North Carolina. Opened in 1924, it's the third oldest ballpark in minor league baseball, used by the high single-A Asheville tourists. In the 1940s, it was home to a Negro League team, the Asheville Blues. In the 50s, there was a racetrack built around it and hosted three NASCAR races. In the 80s, it served as one of the settings for the film Bull Durham. The standout feature is the right field fence, standing at 36 feet high, the same as Fenway Park's Green Monster. Number 23, Japan's oldest ballpark, Koshien Stadium, in the city of Nishinomiya, Hyogo Prefecture. Opened on August 1st, 1924, which means the 100-year anniversary is coming up this summer. It was built to host the National High School Baseball Championships annually. The stadium is so well known for this that the high school championships are referred to simply as Koshien. It's also been the home of the Hanshin Tigers since 1936, one of the most popular teams in Japan, and the reigning Japan Series champions. At the time of its opening, capacity was 55,000. Now it's been reduced to 47,000. A bit smaller, but still the largest in Japan. 387 feet to center, 312 to left and right. This is the other stadium visited by the Major League All-Stars in 1934. Number 22, Ray Fisher Stadium in Ann Arbor, Michigan. This one opened on April 21st, 1923. It's been home to the University of Michigan baseball team ever since then. It was originally called Ferry Field but the name was changed to honor the man who coached the Wolverines from 1921 to 1958. It seats 4,000 with a surface of artificial turf. 
Number 21, Lecombe Park in Bradenton, Florida. Opened in 1923 with a capacity of just 2,000. It has since been renovated and expanded, now seating up to 8,500. It's been the spring training home for a few different MLB teams throughout its history. The Pittsburgh Pirates call it home now, as they've done since 1969. It's also home to the single-A Bradenton Marauders. It's got major league dimensions, 400 to center, 335 to left and right, second oldest ballpark in minor league baseball, and the oldest one used for spring training. Number 20, Robertson Field at Sato Stadium in New York City. Opened in 1923, it's the home field for the University of Columbia baseball team. Capacity is just 1,500. In 2007, an artificial turf surface was installed. It's located on the tip of Manhattan. Due to its proximity to the creek separating Manhattan from the Bronx, the center field fence is extremely shallow compared to the left and right field fences. Number 19, Crampton Bowl in Montgomery, Alabama, built on the site of a former landfill. In May of 1922, it was first used for a game between Auburn and Vanderbilt Universities. Later that year, the Philadelphia Athletics made it their spring training home. A few different minor league teams and one Negro League team played there from the mid-20s to the late 40s. In 1943, the deciding game of the Negro League World Series was played there. But from the 1950s to today, it's been used exclusively for football, not baseball. You could make an argument that it doesn't belong here because it's no longer a baseball stadium. But that was the original purpose of the stadium. It's got so much baseball history, and it's still functioning today. So it's included here. Number 18, Doubleday Field in Cooperstown, New York, located just two blocks from the Baseball Hall of Fame. The field was built on an old farm in 1920. Grandstands were added in 1924. Capacity was increased over time and can now seat 9,791. Natural grass field, 390 feet to center, 296 to left, 312 to right. From 1940 to 2008, it was home to the MLB Hall of Fame game, an in-season exhibition game. When that was discontinued, it was replaced by the Baseball Hall of Fame Classic, which has been played at Doubleday Field from 2009 to the present. Number 17, Taiwan's oldest ballpark, Chiayi City Municipal Baseball Stadium. Built in 1918 under Japanese rule, it was home to the China Trust Wales of the CPBL from 1998 to 2003. Seating capacity is 10,000. Number 16, Boss Field in Evansville, Indiana, located on a street called Don Mattingly Way. Opened in 1915, it was the first municipally owned sports stadium in the U.S. Today, it's the third oldest ballpark in the U.S. used by a professional baseball team. The Evansville Otters of the Frontier League have called it home since 1995. Eleven baseball teams have called it home, and one professional football team played two seasons there in the 1920s. Seating capacity, 5,181. Standing room of 8,000. Grass surface, 415 to center, 315 to right. Don Mattingly and several other Major League players played on this field in their high school days. The field was also used in a few scenes in the movie, A League of Their Own. Number 15, Wrigley Field, opened in 1914 in Chicago as the home of the Chicago Whales of the Federal League. At the time, it was called Wiegman Park. The Federal League only lasted one season in 1915. A year later, the Chicago Cubs made it their home, and they've been playing there ever since. In 1920, it was renamed Cubs Park, and in 1927, renamed to Wrigley Field. Grass surface, 400 feet to center, 355 to left, 353 to right. Capacity of 41,649. Some features really make it stick out. The ivy-covered outfield wall, the hand-turned scoreboard, and the view of the field from the rooftops across the street. It was home to a few NFL teams back in the day, including the Chicago Bears from 1921 to 1970. Number 14, Jackie Robinson Ballpark, opened in 1914 in Daytona Beach, Florida. Of course, it wasn't called Jackie Robinson Ballpark back then. Jackie hadn't been born yet. It was known as City Island Ballpark. It's where Jackie played his first spring training games in 1946 when he was assigned to the AAA Montreal Royals. Four different major league teams made it their spring training home in the past. Several minor league teams have called it home. Presently, it's being used by the Daytona Tortugas. They've been there since 2015. This is the oldest ballpark used in minor league baseball. It's 400 to center, 317 to left, 325 to right natural grass surface, and naturally, there's a statue of Jackie Robinson at the entrance. Number 13, Fenway Park in Boston, the oldest stadium used in Major League Baseball. Opened in 1912, and it's been home to the Boston Red Sox the whole time. 
It was temporarily used by the Boston Braves in the ballpark's early days, and used by a number of NFL and AFL teams from the 1920s all the way to the late 60s. Not your average ballpark, it's about 390 to center, but 420 to deep right center, 310 to left, 302 to right, but 380 to right center with a short outfield wall. In left field though is the Green Monster, a 37 foot high wall. Capacity is over 37,000. Number 12, Rickwood Field in Birmingham, Alabama, the oldest professional ballpark in the US. It was built in 1910 as home of the Birmingham Barons, a minor league team that still plays there today, though they haven't played there continuously. It was also previously used by the Birmingham Black Barons of the Negro Leagues, and as a spring training site for the Phillies and Pirates. It seats 10,800, 393 to center, 321 to left, 332 to right. Willie Mays played at Rickwood as a member of the Black Barons. The field was used for scenes in the movies 42 and Cobb. On June 20th of this year, it will host a regular season Major League game between the San Francisco Giants and the St. Louis Cardinals. Number 11, Warren Ballpark, Bisbee, Arizona. Built in 1909 by a mining company as a recreation site for miners and their families. It became a professional park in 1947 when it became home to the Bisbee Douglas Copper Kings. They remained until 1958 and were briefly revived in 2003, currently used by the local high school baseball and football teams. Number 10, Cardines Field in Newport, Rhode Island. The earliest documented proof of stadium construction is 1908, but it may be older than that. Originally called Basin Field, it was later renamed Cardines Field, built for Sandlot baseball games by railroad workers. Many barnstorming Negro League All-Star teams visited there. One visitor was Satchel Page, during World War II, Yogi Berra, Phil Rizzuto, and Bob Feller played there in a local amateur league while they were stationed at the Newport Naval Base. The Newport Gulls, a collegiate summer team, have been playing there since 2001. Capacity is 3,000, 390 to center, 315 to left and right. Number 9, Horlick Field in Racine, Wisconsin. Opened in 1907, it was first used by a minor league team called the Racine Malted Milks. The field is named after William Horlick, the inventor of malted milk. From 1943 to 1950, it was home of the Racine Bells of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League. In 1945, the Chicago American Giants of the Negro American League hosted several games here. A couple NFL teams called it home in the 1920s. And since 1953, it's been home to a semi-pro football team, the Racine Raiders. The park is enclosed with stone walls and chain fences. Capacity is 5,000. Number 8, Goss Stadium at Coleman Field in Corvallis, Oregon. First game was played there on April 12, 1907. Oregon State University's baseball team has used it ever since it opened, winning over a thousand games at this ballpark. 400 feet to center, 330 to left and right. Capacity is 3,587. Originally used grass, but this century switched to turf. One unusual feature is the alignment with the batter and catcher facing southeast. Elevation is 240 feet above sea level. Number 7, Centennial Field in Burlington, Vermont. The land was dedicated in 1904 in celebration of Vermont University's 100-year anniversary, hence the name. The first game was played in 1906. University of Vermont's baseball team played there off and on from 1906 to 2009. The Vermont Lake Monsters, a collegiate team, have played at Centennial Field since 1994. They were a minor league team up until 2020. Other minor league teams played there as far back as 1955. The field is natural grass. Fences are 405 to center, 330 to left, 323 to right. Capacity 4,415. Number 6, Hanover Insurance Park at Fitton Field in Worcester, Massachusetts. The site was used as early as 1903 by the College of the Holy Cross's football team. In 1905, it was first used by the college's baseball team. The first baseball game there was the same day it became known as Fitton Field. Holy Cross has played there continuously till the present day. Also playing at this field are the Worcester Bravehearts, a collegiate league team, since 2014. Previously, the Worcester Tornadoes of the Can-Am League played there from 2005 to 2012. In 1922, Lou Gehrig played there as a member of Columbia University's baseball team. In 1935, Babe Ruth played there as a member of the Boston Braves, in an exhibition versus Holy Cross. It was simply known as Fitton Field for the first 100 years, until renovations were done in 2005, and the name was changed to Hanover Insurance Park. Grass surface, 385 to center, 332 to left, 313 to right. Capacity, 3,000. 
Number 5. Drayton McLean Baseball Stadium at John H. Cobbs Field in East Lansing, Michigan. Opened in 1902 under the name Old College Field and used by Michigan State University. In 1969, the field was named after John Cobbs, a former MSU coach, and the stadium was named after Drayton McLean in 2008 after he made the donations for the park's renovations. The number of five former Michigan State players hang on the right field fence, including Hall of Famer Robin Roberts, Kurt Gibson, and Steve Garvey. 400 feet to center, 301 to the corners. Seating capacity is 4,000. Open space outside the foul lines allows for over 5,000 standing room capacity. Number 4, League Stadium in Huntingburg, Indiana. Going back to the 19th century now, this one was built in 1894. It was home to an independent league team, the Dubois County Dragons, in the 1990s. Now home to a collegiate team, the Dubois County Bombers. And it's also used by a high school baseball team. It was renovated in 1991 to be used for scenes in the movie A League of Their Own. Dimensions are 385 to center, 332 to left, 320 to right. Seating capacity is just 2,783. Number 3, Fuller Field in Clinton, Massachusetts. Built in 1878, it's certified by Guinness World Records as the oldest continuously used baseball diamond. Originally named Clinton Baseball Ground and used by the Clinton Baseball Club. Hall of Fame pitcher Tim Keefe played on these grounds. In 1921, it was named after William Fuller, a local mill owner. Previously used by the local high school team, now used by a Babe Ruth League team and an adult league team. Number 2, Labatt Memorial Park in London, Ontario. Built in 1877 as Tecumseh Park, it is the oldest continuously used baseball grounds in the world. Fuller Field gets the title of oldest continually used diamond because Labatt Park's field was flooded in 1883 and the diamond was moved. The original diamond was located in what is now the outfield. The original tenants were the London Tecumsehs of the International Association. On May 24, 1877, they hosted a game versus National League champion Boston Red Stockings in front of 8,000 fans. In 1920, the Detroit Tigers, led by Ty Cobb, played an exhibition there versus the Tecumsehs. Various other teams have played at Labatt throughout its history. The London Majors of the Intercounty Baseball League have called it home since 1925, meaning next year will be the 100th anniversary. In 1936, the name was changed after Labatt Brewing Company donated the money for the stadium renovations after it was damaged by yet another flood. Natural grass surface, 402 to center, 330 to the corners, 5,200 seats. Number 1, Palmar de Junco Stadium in Pueblo Nuevo, Matanzas, Cuba. The first official baseball game in Cuban history was played at this site in December of 1874. Considered the cradle of Cuban baseball, this is where the Cuban Baseball Hall of Fame is located. It's still in use today, but not by any teams from the Cuban National Series, mostly used by young players. According to some travel reviews, anyone can step onto the field to take batting practice. Though the game from 1874 is documented, for one reason or another, it's not recognized by Guinness as the world's oldest field. And there you have it, the world's 25 oldest baseball stadiums still in use today. Comment below if you've been to any of these and what your experience was like. Or just comment which one you find the most interesting. Anyway, that's all for this one. Until next time, this is Baseball International. See ya!